Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today I have a review for War for Cybertron's Siege Micromaster class, Laserbeak and Ravage. Most people will remember these two as Soundwave's cassette minions, probably the most well-known of his cassette minions. Uh, they've been reimagined here as weaponizer-esque robots that form some sort of, you know, artillery purpose for larger Transformers. So we're going to take a look at these two, as well as their box and instructions. I'll show you how they interact with other figures, and especially Soundwave. And then at the end of this, I will give you my final thoughts. Alright, the packaging, nothing special here, it's on a blister card. And you've got usual logos, nice artwork of the two, battling side by side, which I, I really like. I love seeing a, a laser beak swoop in here while Ravage is about ready to pounce somebody. Um, these are Dwarf Cybertron Siege number 18, for anyone wondering. And they each have their own unique city factions, which I still don't have memorized, so please excuse me. Uh, here on the back, at the top here, it lists their uh, team name. They're the Soundwave Spy Patrol. And it just shows how you transform them. Ravage takes seven steps, Laserbeak takes only four. And then it shows them attaching to a Soundwave here. We have the instructions here, printed nice and clearly despite being mostly black and purple. And shows how to transform them from the robot modes to their, I want to say cassette modes, but that's not accurate anymore. Shows their very, very involved transformation to make them able to attach to larger robots. Bunch of steps there. Uh, shows them attached to Soundwave's arms. Nothing in here about how they interact with Soundwave in a more traditional way, but don't worry, we'll cover that. Uh, here, you can see Laserbeak, his like alternate mode is called the V1 Sonic Surge Drone Armor. And has these stats. And then Ravage just the V2 Sonic Surge Drone Armor. So, yeah, they're supposed to be like counterparts to each other. And he's got different set of stats here. All right, so their alt modes are designed to be vaguely reminiscent of their classic cassette modes. You know, they got the right shape and everything. But, you know, in the context of this toy line, they're supposed to be a sort of shield device. So it's very basic, just a rectangle. Here on the back, you can flip out this little handle bit here. You could do the same thing for Ravage's old mode. Just flip that out like so. And let's bring in your BFF sound wave. And now the instructions, they keep telling you to plug them into his shoulders. Me personally, I think they work much better in his forearms. I don't know if there's really any difference in universe, but whatever. I think they work a little better as bucklers for him, but because they are, you know, five millimeter posts, they can attach to pretty much anywhere on his body. And I don't know if they plan on making any more of his cassettes like this, but you know, in theory, you could just deck a figure out with these armor bits all over him. So it, it's cool. It gives them a purpose, I guess. I mean, they're more than just a rectangular brick. So there's that. But that's not what we want to see, right? We all know what you clicked on this video for. You want to see Soundwave store these guys in his chest compartment. So let's do that. All right, so you open up his chest by pressing the button, like so. Then either one of these figures can be stored inside. And it's actually a pretty tight fit. Like they'll they'll stay in there. They're not flopping around at all. You go and just close it. And now he has something more than just a blue backdrop in his chest. So that's how laser beak looks inside of him. It causes his door to stick a little bit. 
are crammed in there so hard. I'm worried about scraping paint off of these, honestly. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd put them in there too. There's Ravage, I think that looks a little bit better. Blends in with sound waves, you know, black and gray is a little better. So yeah, it's uh, nothing too crazy, nothing too exciting. You know, as a rule, they have to be able to fit inside Soundwave, otherwise the fans would riot, for sure. But it is good that they've maintained that interactivity between him and his little buddies. All right, we're gonna go ahead and uh, transform these two now. Start with Laserbeak, because he's by far the simplest. What we do is flip his feet down on the sides, like that. Open up his wings. Pull out his head, like so. And then two part movement, flip up his tail, flip the top part down. Pretty little backpack thing. And that's laser beak. And if you're wondering why his face looks like some sort of screen or cockpit, that is because laser beak is actually based on his appearance in the very first episode of the Transformers, uh, more than meets the eye part one. He didn't gain his more recognizable condor face until he came to Earth and adopted um, you know, the Earth mode of a cassette tape. So that's why that's a thing. I know some people aren't crazy about this if they were hoping to have this as a stand-in as their quintessential G1 laser beak. So yeah, it may not please everybody with the direction they went, though this could be easily retooled to have a different head if they ever wanted to create a version of this that's in an Earth setting. Random uh, serial number here on his wings. Here's Laserbeak along with his Titan's Return version. You can see he's significantly smaller. He's, you know, the size of a Micro Master, whereas this is a Legends size toy. Where, you know, one of these basically equals two of these from a uh, price point perspective. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that the older Laserbeak has a lot more black on him. He's almost completely black, just with some red and silver accents. Whereas this guy shows a lot more red. And um, neither one is really perfect when it comes to the color ratio as far as uh, mimicking Laserbeak's cartoon model. This guy's got a bit too much red. This one doesn't have nearly enough. But oh well, what can you do? Uh, Shape-wise, this guy definitely looks more like G1 Laserbeak than this one. The Titans Return cassettes were turned into, like, tablets that also had a third vehicular mode. And because I think they tried to cram so many different features into one toy, the end results usually ended up not looking so great. Uh, I'm kind of okay with this as a, a reimagined take on the character. I think it's one of the better Titans Return molds. The Rewind and uh, Rubble Frenzy mold was probably the best. The cat ones were awful. I hated those. So yeah, there's big differences between them. This guy's a lot smaller because he is meant to be paired with a Voyager scale sound wave, whereas this one was paired with a leader scale. So naturally going to be a big size difference. Going back to our friend Soundwave, there was a third way that he was designed to interact with Laserbeak. If you lift up his forearm, you can see these grooves here that are actually meant to accommodate Laserbeak's feet. You can see he's got these little bits right here that stick out. They slide right in there. Now, unfortunately, Soundwave kind of has to hold his forearm up like the 90, but what can you do? And this is designed to kind of go right in there. And you may have to fiddle with it a little bit. His feet don't always like to stay planted, but it is doable. So you could have Soundwave conversing with his little pet here. So very, very cool. All right, now we have Ravage's transformation and he's a bit more involved than old Laserbeak. So the first thing you wanna do is flip these feet out like so. And you're gonna bend these down. Make sure they kind of untab from their spot there. Like that. I'm gonna flip the whole lower body part all the way around. I'm gonna 
rotate these around as far as they'll go. Like that. And pull the feet out. And back. Like that. I would take this opportunity to pull his head out while you have the clearance. And then you're just gonna bend these inwards. Like so. Okay, and it's a little fiddly because of his dainty little legs there, but that is his beast mode. He's kind of funny looking. A lot of people have been making fun of him saying he's going on a diet and stuff because Ravage is typically depicted as being very sleek, whereas this one is very thick limbed, very blocky. So it's a pretty good departure from how the character normally looks. Definitely takes some getting used to. And he doesn't have a lot of meaningful articulation in his legs. They do bend, but usually in the wrong way from what you would expect. So effectively, like his front legs really only pose like this. I think that, I think that would be pretty unnatural. Uh, it doesn't have a tail of any kind. And then he has these little sculpted weapons, which are meant to emulate his hip-mounted blasters on the original toy. Creepy red eyes, just like he's supposed to have. And yeah, he's just uh, an evil robotic house cat, I guess. Here's Ravage alongside his Titan's Return counterpart. Just like Laserbeak, he's significantly smaller. Uh, much closer in color this time because, I mean, really Ravage is just mostly black with some silver. Uh, biggest color difference is the eyes. This Ravage has red eyes. This one has yellow. As much as I've already mentioned, I'm not a fan of the Titans Return cat cassettes. Come off looking kind of silly, flat. He does at least meet the physique of Ravage. You know, as like a lean, powerful jaguar than Mr. Uh, Chunky Blocks here. So, you know, which one's the best? I, I don't know. Still think this is a weak mold, but it does come off looking more like Ravage than uh, that. All right, and that completes our look at Laser Beacon Ravage. I'll admit I have pretty mixed feelings about this set. I'm not even 100% sure why, just I'm not excited about them like I probably should be. I don't know, but just because they're so small and lacking any kind of complexity or what. I definitely favor Laserbeak in this set over Ravage. Uh, I just don't get why they couldn't do Ravage right. They have the original 80s design to go from, they have the masterpiece design to take cues from, and yet they kind of ended up with this big old clunky mess here. It's not terrible, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it does seem that for some reason the uh, Hasbro and Takara designers just seem to have a hard time with the cat cassettes, making them look just right. These guys should be starting to show up in stores here soon, along with their wave mates, Red Heat and Stakeout. They are part of the MicroMaster assortment. I don't know if that means that they're being retconned as MicroMasters in this new Toy Lines continuity. I'm not sure what the stances on that, if they're just part of the assortment or if they actually are considered micromasters this time around. I mean, they've been, you know, considered other things before, deployers, mini cons. So who knows? These two are good to have if you want to have a group of cassettes to interact with your sound wave, but they're really not a necessity. Honestly, unless you just want to collect them all, you can probably save 10 bucks with these two. I am hoping that we do see more of the cassettes done, both Decepticon and Autobot, you know, if they do a, a blaster here down the road. These two by themselves already have several redeco options that they could go with to save some money and give us more characters. There's the obvious Buzzsaw from Laserbeak. Ravage could be redecoed or remolded into some other things as well. But time will tell. So far, there haven't been any new announcements on that front. And that's where I'm going to end the review. 
I hope you enjoyed watching me break these two down. If you did like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more reviews like this one or any of my other Transformers related content, make sure to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. Thanks for joining me again, and with all that said, I will see you next time.